Today on Drawbly. Ben is painting apples. Hey, I'm Ben. And I'm Abby. And we are self-taught artists documenting our journey of learning to draw, which is, of course, better with friends. So click that subscribe button if you're new around here. And check out our guidebook, How to Easily Draw Every Day, at the link below in the description. Ben, you love painting apples. I do love painting apples. You've loved them ever since we first tried that Ever since I course. first had an apple when I was a young lad. Ever since I was a young lad and apples were a thing. Ever since I saw a YouTube video from yes Ahmed El Dori on painting the apple I think it was on the Proco channel if I'm remembering correctly yes and uh, we ended up going through his course very very exceptional course would highly recommend yeah one of my favorite artists on Instagram uh, posted that they have been going through his same course as well oh same really mm -hmm. oh wow yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I mean and they're already an amazing artist I think it just goes to show that like I think going through fundamental stuff is always a good idea, and that's actually something we've been talking about lately, uh, kind of picking up a new course or tutorial yeah. to kind of go through. Just to, I, I think it's good to revisit fundamentals, even if they're something that you already know. I think you can always pick up new stuff by practicing. Yes, and it's so motivating to kind of take the work out of deciding what am I going to work on today, and to have somebody else there to tell you. Uh, what to do today. It's just you just show up, you do the work, you go home, and now I'm talking about the gym instead of <laughs> art and when you go to a workout class instead of just the gym, you know, to each their own. But... Abby, do you know why I love painting apples so much? Why? You, you don't have any any guess? That's I just why. have no idea. You have no idea. No, just kidding. I, I think you paint wonderful apples and you get to practice a lot of cool fundamentals and work with color, uh, but you tell me. Apples are stupid simple. They're just spheres. They have a texture that's kind of similar to skin. They're a little, you know, a little shiny, a little... They're colorful. A little translucent. They're colorful. Um, you can kind of have some fun with their, their shape and their color. They don't mm -hmm. always have to be red. You can be experimental with them. They're just so simple that you can just really practice all sorts of different fundamentals here in terms of painting that yeah. it's just such a fun exercise. Like literally if I just spent the rest of my life painting only one thing, it would probably be apples. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a good choice. As somebody who painted her own AirPod case a bunch of times, I, if I had to paint that or an apple all the time, I'd choose the apple because uh, there's a little more versatility and color. Um, and I love all the texture you're using. That's such a that's fun That's right, I'm using too. a texture brush and I never yeah. use texture brushes. I am a hard round brush user through and through, mm -hmm. but here, I'm using a texture brush. And that's the beauty of drawing the same thing over and over as well, is it just gives you a lot more room to experiment. Because uh, you're not trying to draw something totally new in a totally new way, you're drawing something familiar to you in a new way that you've drawn many times, and that's really smart. I do enjoy, like, using new ideas, and like, here I'm just, like, throwing down random paint like different colors, I'm like, sure, let's just try all the colors of the rainbow and see what happens. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really good way to find, obviously, you know, a lot of the time what doesn't work, but sometimes what does. I think a lot of just growing as an artist is finding the things that don't work. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Did anything on this apple not work for you in particular that you'd like to point out? I think in general, I noticed like how kind of lacking my perspective was. Hmm. And a lot of that, you know, it's a simple sphere, but when you're th casting a shadow or what's sometimes called throwing a shadow, um, I noticed that my shadows didn't feel super believable. And there are actual technical strategies you can use to get an accurate shadow placement, but I just, I, I genuinely don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. So like when I was doing that, I was like, there's something wrong with my shadow. I don't know what it is. I should try to figure this out. Do you draw at all with reference or no reference? No, no, none, none of these apples have a reference. Oh. And that would be very helpful. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, painting apples from the imagination is just one, obviously it's a really simple subject matter, it's a sphere, mm -hmm. for crying out loud. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's just, you know, a good way to, to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Learn and practice. And I bet if you drew a, a mere smattering of apples from life, you would quickly get a good grasp on that shadow casting that you want to uh, you, you master. Would, you would think that, but it's just something that, like, it... 
if it's if I don't practice it a lot, I, I lose it. I forget mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. You have to be involved with it every day, touching back on it. That's so true. Um, I've been learning a little bit more Japanese lately. I'm kind of back on that train since yeah, the wedding. Yeah. And I was using the Pimsleur method because I could just listen to it while I'm on my in my car and it's like a recorded book you know where they say it in English and then in Abby Japanese. I know you've been doing this I live with you I know but for those of you at home <laughs> who don't know um, it's just a, a, a relatively popular language learning method mm -hmm. but something they talk about is like well if you're learning a new language you need to spend time with it every day um, or you'll very quickly lose what you're learning and I spent a week doing that and then I did take a few days off and I came back a week later like a few days later and I was like oh I've already kind of lost some of what I was starting to grasp mm -hmm. um, especially since what you were learning was in my opinion pretty complex yeah although I props to the Pimsleur method making it feel easy um, <laughs> so I, I imagine it must be somewhat the same with uh, art where it's like you need to be involved with it each day to the extent that you can and your life allows as much as you can. Definitely some weeks I find I'm more able to spend more time with it than others. Yeah, absolutely. Like imagine if you were if you were like a kind of running a marathon and you just stopped running before your race. It's like if you're going to make a really cool good good painting, you got to practice mm -hmm. before you try to take on that big project. Yeah. And something I don't think too much about even at this stage in our learning process is the idea of a big project. Like I have no thought in my head just now to try to create a huge, big, finished piece that's refined here and there and has every element and I'm checking everything off on the list of like, make sure these shadows are correct and the values are correct. Like nothing in my mind to that right now. I too just want to do like studies and learn and practice without worrying too much about this perfect polished outcome. Yeah, we don't, we have not had a project where we worked on something for like you know, a month or anything like that. That would probably be a really, really big project. Mm -hmm. What would you do for a project like that if you had to do one? I don't even know, like a singular piece. It would have to be an illustration with like a character, a background, some like crazy pose and perspective. Something that would like absolutely push me to my limit. And keep your interest the entire time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. That's why I really like what we do here where we only spend like a couple hours on, or, yeah, I think you at most spend like four hours on a portrait. Mm -hmm. So we don't go too crazy into stuff. Right, right. And this, a lot of that, for me anyway, so far is just, I'm limited by what I can do so far. Just give me more time and I'm not uh, making it much better. <laughs> Yeah, my apples get really messy, by the way. I don't know if you noticed. Where I'm just like, this is... The apples are actually in descending order, where the first apple you saw was the last apple I created. Oh, really? Yeah, there's so much paint here that I did on this apple that just gets erased here at the end. It's where looking you can, really like, barely cool, actually. See it. I like where you have it now. This is some interesting stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it, it turned out a little flat, a little, yeah. you know, impressionistic, maybe. No, not at all. I thought there was a lot of, like, color variety, but subtle, like, hue shift, which is kind of hard to capture and still keep, like, distinct texture without making everything airbrushed. Good job. Ooh, here we go. This is avant-garde. Yes, yeah, going full experimental. Yeah. Where I was like, I need some big brush strokes. That's what. That's what's gonna make this look like an apple. You are making me want to sit down and just spend an afternoon painting apples because this. You've made this look so fun. You wouldn't think that like painting apples over and over would be fun, but the way you've gone about this and changing it every time and like clearly like having fun and trying new things. And, you know, using a simple subject matter, it makes me really, really want to sit down and do this. Your background is fun. I Just... think apples are, like, literally the most fun thing to paint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They, like I said, they're, they're just so simple, but there's so much variety and different stuff that you can do with them. Yeah, it is. I feel like sometimes it's hard, too, as like a, 
uh, I don't know, an amateur artist to make myself sit down and do things that aren't like a fun portrait of a mm. cute and thing. Um, but here you are definitely doing a good job illustrating the value of stepping away from that mentality as somebody, even people who just like to draw for the sake of drawing and not necessarily for improving. I think this is something you could get behind as even just for the sake of drawing. <laughs> well, I think I went a little too crazy with the colors on this one and it gets muddy slash bleh. Yeah. I'm just gonna say yeah. bleh. The shadow half definitely, uh, I see what you're saying there, but I like still I like said it. though, they're in descending order. Yeah. So first apple was that one on the far left. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, they're <laughs> wonderful. And if you want to be wonderful, click that like and subscribe button and check out our guidebook, How to Easily Draw Every Day, at the link in the description. Share your work on Instagram with hashtag Drawbly because drawing is better with friends. And this is the part where we say Goodbye. Goomba. Next up, you should start drawing piles of blueberries. Piles of blueberries? I, I feel like I've but, seen cool blueberry art and this is the next <laughs> step for you. I've seen cool blueberry art, Ben. <laughs> you need to draw blueberry. This is the next step in your art career. It's, it's going to be your blue phase. <laughs> your blue phase. You don't, you're not, I'm gonna Every have a blueberry a blue, phase. It's a blueberry yeah. phase, yeah.